Hello. Hey, I decided to pop on just a little bit early today because I have to leave a little bit early today. I am going to do a little self-care, which I don't do very often. And the only time they could get me in was two o'clock. I'm actually going to go get a pedicure. I haven't had one for months. Now, the crazy thing is, it's raining. <laughs> so, you guys would laugh. I'm I'm wearing I'm wearing my Uggs under my loose kind of loungy pants so <laughs> that I can go get that done. But it's all good, right? Because they're gonna have to put those little slippers on me. Then I'm just gonna make sure I'm dry before I leave, so I can put my little Uggs back on. Because it's freezing here today. It's freezing. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, where we have not had rain for almost oh, what, uh, 300 days. It's been almost a year since we've had rain. And it's raining today. And I was out there moving stuff, finding out where rain water hits everything out under my patio. So that's been fun. So hello, hello, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a weird, it's a weird day because we haven't had rain here for so long. Um, and my crazy dog discovered the steps to get into the pool today. I go out this morning. I, we put the dogs out and we let them eat and do their business. And then we call them back in and I went to call. I mean, the little dogs come right back in. Like they're so ready to come back in the house. No, not Zena. I look out and Zena is standing in the pool. Like she's crazy. <laughs> she's crazy. It's so cold. <laughs> oh, so you sent it over from California. Hello, mid-century wasted. You sent it over from SoCal. I got it now. I got it. Yeah. I, you know what? We need it. We need the rain so bad here. So I'm not complaining about getting rain. It's just the timing is a little questionable for me right now. And for those asking, no, I am not finished moving. Had a moving truck on Saturday. Had a crew of people helping, but we just didn't get it done. We just didn't get it done. It's snowing in Kingman. Wow. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's not like anybody's going to see my toes anytime soon. So if it smudges, it smudges. It's all good. I'm going for the pampering. I'm going for the pampering. So howdy, howdy, everyone. So you saw the glass video that I put up yesterday. And I was thinking I want to do some more of that type video. And it was kind of fun, too. I didn't have to spend as long in the mall going through every little thing and video videoing everything. I really just concentrated on the glass. And I actually lost some footage that I was really bummed. I don't know what happened. I remember filming it, but it did not come out right. The camera was all messed up. And if that happens again anytime soon, we're going to be looking for a new camera. Um, cause it was a bunch of this really cool mid century glass that I wasn't able to show, but it was still super fun. So I am looking for ideas for other things. You know, I, I kind of made myself a list of what would be fun would be like, you know, mid century decor in general, just looking for mid century that sells, um, kitsch, <laughs> like what, what qualifies as kitsch, um, which is a really popular uh, style of decorating Hollywood Regency um, and then like doing like pottery and that kind of thing so it, in the comments after this video not like there's a live chat right now and I love you guys but I need this stuff kind of documented down in the comments so those of you watching me live right now when this is over if you could come back and leave a comment of what type of thing you are, you know what? I'll put it in the community tab too. But if you could just leave a comment of what you would like me to go on a very focused treasure hunt for, very focused, um, I will start adding on that list and start doing that. 
And if you're watching this in the replay, yes, please just leave me a comment down there to uh, let me know what you want me to go hunting for. So I only bought four things, I bought four things yesterday. How disciplined is that? <laughs> and three of them are glass and one of them was just like I had to have it. Oh, by the way, thank you, Melissa, for my little my little turtle friend here. Um, I got that. I got a couple of goodies. I've been really bad about unboxing packages. So I just want to give a shout out. Um, Melissa sent me a couple of little goodies. Um, and then um, I got this. I got this. Now, I couldn't read the name on the package, but I remember battling with someone trying to win this in an auction and here it shows up at my door so thank you because I love him um, and then um, some of you send some amazing things for me to auction off on our um, Friday sales this came from Eleanor Agnell she sent a whole bunch of these new old stock Disney necklaces that we're going to auction off what is all over my hand we're going to auction off on friday friday there we go there's snow white there's mickey there's i think there's a tinkerbell there's some sunflower but like they're really awesome and then i also got a whole bunch of frogs um the same thing so i really appreciate that you guys it is that is awesomeness. Awesomeness. Um, I'm I'm really bad about accepting gifts. I will just tell you, um, it's it's always I love giving gifts. I am like the giver, but I I feel very awkward accepting gifts. So I'm gonna try to get better at that because it it feels nice. <laughs> Okay, so let me show you what I bought. Where's my receipt? Where's my receipt? Um, I found this little guy. And he's vintage. He's a little foal, which is a baby horse. He's not marked. And I like to get things that are not marked and then do the research so that I can help you guys with that. I did end up paying nine. 950 for him. So just under 10 bucks for the little horse. And I'm going to share my screen and I think I might have to blow it up a little bit. Boop. Boop. Okay. And I'm going to look what do I know about him? I know he is a vintage horse figurine and he's pink. It's what I know, right? So I'm going to sort by highest. Why do I sort by highest? Because I don't care what the lowest are going for. I ignore the lowest. I want to see the highest. Um, bu, 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 bu. So we got 81 results. That's not so bad. I'm going to look through here. And when I get down to where I can go to the solds, I'm going to go to the solds. And we're going to see. I don't think he's a super high priced little horse. He's a little planter. Yeah, similar, but not exactly. Yeah, no, no. I could add in pink, but there's not very many results to begin with. So now this is where a lot of people get stumped. I'm down down in this down in the section where I, I start not even paying it any mind other than maybe to get some um, verification of what it is. So so this is where a lot of sellers get stumped. Well, I can't find the exact one. I don't know what to call it. I don't know how to list it. I don't know how to value it. And I want to encourage you that this is where you get to decide. So based on what those similar ones were, you know, we were kind of like in the 15 to $20 range on similar. So 
I will list this guy as, like I said, a vintage horse. You could, I would say horse and foal in my title, both words, vintage horse, foal, figurine. I will say pink. Um, and I mean, I think he does have a name on the bottom, but it's, maybe I can make it out. What do you guys see there? What do you see? I can't tell what it says. I would like to know what it says. Can anybody make that out? Um, but I wouldn't even worry about it. I would just list them and price them at like, I don't know, I might like list them at like $24.99, even $29.99. If, if I'm a little uncertain, maybe he is more valuable than the ones I see there, yeah, then I'll just put him at $29.99. $29.99. And uh, let's see what happens. You see a C and an M? I want to say that I see a, a little curve under the C making it more like a J. I don't know. And I won't try very hard either. I just won't try. I just don't need to. Somebody, maybe it's an L. Maybe it's an L. All right. If anybody figures that out before we get done here, let me know. And we'll look it up. I would go with what I know. And I would list it. $29.99. Best offer. Let's see what happens. Ah, I could put it up for auction. The thing, my strategy with auction is starting as low as possible. And I think $29.99 would be out of the range of a low end on this. Whereas I might be able to get $29.99 from the right buyer. So that's where, now if I'd only paid a buck for him and I could start him at like 15 bucks, then I would do auction. Um, but because I've got like $9 and 50 cents into him, I need to try and at least double my money, if not triple. Simtra? You think it's Simtra? Yeah. See, I know. And you guys do like the, the put the paper over and the rub. The thing with me is like, I just, I don't. And this is, this is something you'll get over time with experience. I know he's not worth my putting extra time into. I know he's in the 15 to $30 range. He's not worth more than that. I mean, I'm happy to be proven wrong, but I, everything in my gut says this piece is probably a 20 to 25 dollar piece and if rachel spots it it's not getting listed anyway so, <laughs> so there is that too um but yeah i mean i don't know i might play around with some of the words it might be an l l e m p r or something Limper. I don't know. But that's why. I hate Google image search. I really hate Google image, image search. Most <laughs> it's just Google just woke up because I said that. Um, go to sleep, Google. Um, and don't do anything funny. You go away. Um um, I, I just because not enough sellers are on board with a white background and pictures that actually will show the item accurately. That's why I'm just not a fan. The day comes when everybody is on board with that white background. Image search is going to work so much better. So and that's one of the reasons to use a white background in your eBay listings is because eBay is incorporating an image search technology and you want the person who's searching for that item, maybe they have like um, a one in a set or they're looking for a replacement and they've got the picture of the one that they have. You want yours to show up in that very limited amount of results, right? Yeah, I know. I, I don't see her in the chat, so I don't think she's uh, she's watching today. So there's that. Okay, 
Um, one of the other things that I purchased was this little vase. I was looking at all of the Fenton and this was over there. And one of the things that I stress in my glass collecting videos is you have to get your hands on the glass to really learn about it. And if you are touching the Fenton, you're picking up the Fenton, you know it's Fenton, it's identified, and then you were to pick up this piece, you would know this is not Fenton. Um, this is a very dainty, enameled, um, highly, highly crimped and ruffled vase with an optic to it. And when we look, it is hand blown. There's the pontal. Um, and this is Victorian glass. Now, if this were like cheap Chinese glass and um, newer, it wouldn't have this feel. The, the cheap reproduction glass is thicker. It's more coarse in its pontal. It's just not refined glass. It's not, there not a lot of time is taken. It's mass, mass produced. So how do you look up something like this? Like you have absolutely no idea who done it. Well, again, we go with what we know. We go with the fact that it is, um, it's enameled glass vase with a ruffle. I'll just put ruffle in there. Otherwise, we're going to get too many results. I only got 11. That's okay. Let's see what we got. Gives you an idea here. <laughs> so I'm not finding. I'm kind of looking for the shape and technique. I mean, you could just tell the, <clears throat> this is Bristol. I'm not so sure that's Bristol, actually. Um, and remember, not every eBay seller gets their, their things right here either. I'm going to take off the ruffle. Let's just go with enamel. Oh, see, now we're going to get a whole bunch. Um, interesting. I'm going to put in the color purple just to see what else comes up. I know I have some fans of purple over in the chat. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I picked it up too. This will be in a live sale um, or a mystery box. This one might end up in a mystery box. I'm just saying. It's kind of going through. And again, I'm not finding exactly what I want to find. So maybe using purple is not the great greatest way to do this. Let me take out the purple. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add a word that I know to be true with this. You may not know this. But it's a good word to put in your memory banks of this older glass because calling it Victorian glass is actually a, a great keyword. So kind of looking through. I'm looking right now. I'm looking for the shape, specifically the shape on this this ruffled rim, because this is a, a clue. And I would like to narrow it down to at least a region, but if I can't, I can't. Um, dead air as I go through the results. Oh, big storm and no electric. Yikes. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know. Anybody got sunshine? Anyone have sunshine? Where do we need to go visit right now? <laughs> um, not finding it. But look at I'm still I'm still up in the $50 plus range. And what that tells me is with those keywords, I can list this and I will get the right buyer if I were to list it. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is gonna go in a mystery box. You wanna get in on those mystery boxes. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop there, because time is limited. I've seen what I need to see. So, oh, it's 80 in Florida. 
I know, I'm ready to go to Florida. Um, yeah, it's snowing. I won't go where it's snowing. So Victorian art glass, blue enamel base. Well, it's actually purple. So I wouldn't call it blue. I would call it purple or amethyst. Amethyst is a sexier word for purple in the glass world. Um, so I would probably put amethyst in the title and make sure I check purple in the item specifics. That way, if somebody types purple, it's still going to come up. It's still going to come up. 71 in Jacksonville. Okay. I'm jealous. I want to go to Florida. <laughs> um, so I would, if I were listing this, I would list this as Victorian enameled glass vase, crimped, ruffled would be the two words I would use to describe this, crimped, ruffled, optic, and then I would put amethyst. And I, this might be an item I would auction, but I would start it at 50 bucks. $49.99 would be my starting bid, just in case it was something really good. I don't think so. I think this vase is in the 50 to 70 dollar range if i was listing it myself um and if i was putting this at fixed price i would put it probably at mm, probably like 69.99 and expect it to sell for at least 50 bucks so that's what i would do that's what i would do and that's about like you've just seen how much time did we just spend on that that's it that's all i do to keep these listings cranking out Keep them cranking out. Um, you found a similar one. A similar one of, oh, the blue one is 35. Okay, well, let's look at that because that will prove my point. Hold on. Okay, so that, I can't copy and paste, unfortunately. Let me, let me see if I can put that in. Victorian art glass vase. Oops. Wait, glass blue enameled vase. Let me see if I can find the one you're looking at. Is it a sold? Or is it a current listing? Because I don't see it in the solds. Porcelain hot pink horse. In Google Images. Okay, I'm getting confused. I'm, I'm reading like about two different things. <laughs> um, I'm not in the sold seeing a blue enameled. Well, that's kind of. But here's a perfect example. Let me share my screen. Look at this. Look at this vase right here. I'm hoping this is none of you. But I'm going to say that this is, an, this is an inexperienced seller. This seller sold this for $10.25. And they could have gotten at least 50. I'm telling you right now, they could have gotten at least 50. Let's pull up the listing. Let's use this as a lesson for all. Um, first of all, this title, um, Rare Stunning antique opaline frilled rim glass vase. <laughs> Where do I start? So they use the first one, two, three, four, five, six, six words gone before they even said glass vase. So that right there hurt them and search. And you guys are always wanting me to talk about the algorithm. So I would not have used rare and stunning. Opaline, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I would call this opaline. Uh, it's possible. Yeah. Opaline tends to be more opaque. Um, this looks almost more like an opalescent, but, but man, maybe opaline's a good word. I would have to research that a little bit. Overseas or not, this is still not a great title. First of all, don't use all caps. Second of all, do not use punctuation. Third of all, don't use words like rare and stunning in your title. Those are description words. Use those in your description. 
Um, so I would have called this an antique opaline, if I'm just going to go by what they have, antique opaline gla glass vase enameled. I don't think I would have put blown there either because that's good for the item specifics. So there's a lot of things that can go into item specifics that you don't need to put in the title and use up the percentage of relevant words. And what I mean by that is based on what a customer is putting into search to find this, they're probably, they're probably putting in antique opaline glass vase. So if that's the majority of your words, you're gonna come up higher in search. If you, and this is like that little math thing, if you add more words, then you're reducing the relevance percentage that the algorithm is coming up with. It does look a little bit like a jack in the, actually that is a jack in the pulpit, you're right. The jack, in, that is jack in the pulpit. You So that's definitely a term you'd wanna use too. So. Yeah, let's see if they even used item specifics. Okay, they did. They used Victorian. So you want to use that in your title too. If you're going to use it in your item specifics, use it in the title. So antique Victorian art glass opaline base. Oh, are they seriously calling it Mosier? <gasps> wow. So if they knew it... Okay, they're question mark. They think it might be Mosier. Okay, I was gonna say, if you know this is Mosier, okay. Somebody can reach out to them and have them join the niche to profit group. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we can help them make more money. Um, so yeah, don't make those mistakes. And this is, I don't want you guys, my point is, I don't want you guys looking at a result like that and then thinking that's all yours is worth. I want you to have confidence in the item that you're listing and selling, so you know better. So you know, no, 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 no. I am not selling this for $10. I am selling this for $110. Because I would, I would almost guarantee you that another reseller bought this and is going to flip it. Because um, that's what happens when you price stuff too cheap. It'll happen. I don't want that to happen to you guys. Someone on Facebook Marketplace said something from the 90s was antique. Nope, nope. Antique has to be 100 years old. That is in the reselling world. 100 plus years is antique. 20 plus years is vintage. So antique right now is 19 up to 19, 1921. Yeah. You're in the IT and always argue about, always argue with your customers over the search algorithms and their 256 file name. Yeah, it's relevance, 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 relevance is the key. I'm telling you, I have worked directly with the, I don't know if he's still the chief technical officer of eBay. It's been a few years. Um, but when, when Cassini was on the scene and when that was like a hot, thing and when item specifics were first coming into play and they were trying to get everybody to use UPC codes and what that was all about. We were talking about how do we develop a system for all of the one-offs to also be in the database and, and all of that good stuff. So there's a lot to it. But the number one, and I'm taking tape off this as I'm talking to you, um, the number one key thing with the eBay search algorithm and probably Google and probably every other search engine out there is relevance to what the person searching is typing in. So the more words you match with what they've typed in and the higher percentage of the words that match, the higher you're going to come up in search. So that's why phrasing matters. That's why not ed adding extra words matters. Okay, so there's that. So I also got this little beauty. Now I did pay, what did I pay? I paid $19.50 for this. Seems like a lot, right? But again, this is one of those cases where the dealer had this marked as satin glass, so they didn't know what they had. This is not satin glass. This is stretch glass. 
why do I see something on the inside of there? I don't know. It's reflecting. So this is stretch glass. And you know it's stretch glass because of the iridescence. Satin glass is not going to have iridescence. That iridescence comes from the same type of technique used for making carnival glass. They spray a metallic spray. <laughs> that was redundant. On it, and then they refire it. And that's what gives it that cool iridescence. And the iridescence comes out like stretch marks. So that's how it is called stretch glass. So it's a beautiful stretch iridescent candy jar or dish. So let's go see what it's worth. I know it's worth more than 20 bucks. So I'm going to call it a stretch glass candy. I'm just going to put candy. And I'm already sorted by highest first. So here's one done by Fenton. And I'm looking now, I'm, what I'm looking here is to see if, if the patterning, if the, if the, because it's made, it's press glass, it's made in a mold. So I'm looking to see if the mold is the same. It is not. Mine does not have any of these little ridges. So, okay, I can kind of rule out that it's this Fenton pattern. Dun, 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 dun. Similar, different. There's the Fenton. Aha! I have just found it. Um, so it's Northwood Celeste Blue stretch glass. 1916 to 1925. They took a best offer that was uh, probably around 40 bucks based on this. Remember, it's the combination of the shipping and the price. And there's only $10 shipping here. There's 23 here. So add 10 to this. Yeah. So they took an offer in the $40 range. So I knew it was worth I knew it was worth at least double. Now, again, sold back in November. Let's take a look now that we know what it is. I'm going to call it Northwood. Let's get let's get fine tuned. And it looks like that's about the ballpark. But how many are listed? Oh well, look at there. Hmm. See, you got to go by what's listed. Now we are bumping up some value here because the sellers are bumping. Oh, I didn't even check to see if it glowed. I don't have my black light with me. This one's at auction. This, now what we found out, this is not the Northwood one. This is the Fenton one. That's interesting. Probably why it's not selling. Yeah, the one with the little ridges is probably the Fenton one. Northwood didn't use the ridges. So interesting. So this will be in the next live sale. No, not the next one. The next one's jewelry. This will be in the next hard goods live sale. And now you guys have a little head start. And hopefully I make my $20 back. I'm pretty sure I will. You guys love the blue glass. So that's why I picked it up. You know, so you think this one is Fenton and that one listing was wrong because the Fenton was selling for higher money. Brenda says she's 100% sure. I'll dig into it a little more. Yeah, this stuff is only going to sell for more if we collectively raise the prices and we stop taking these lower results and using that as our comps. That's the point I'm trying to make to you guys. Uh, you know, what is it? Rising, what is it? Rising tides raise all ships. Did I say that right? And that means that we are all in this antiques collectible, you know, marketplace together. And if we collectively raise those prices, raise the prices on this stuff, I mean, not ridiculously, but get it up where it belongs, other sellers coming along. Go by those comps and go by those comps and go by those comps. And pretty soon we have this stuff back up where it should be selling. Yes, yeah, stop racing to the bottom. Please, please, please. <laughs> Oops, trying to put that on there. Oops, where'd it go? This moves too fast sometimes. There it goes. I want to make this point. No need to race to the bottom. We are not in a pricing market with 
antiques and collectibles and one-offs. It's not a commodity item. It is, a, sure, people are still going to come in and they're going to price stuff cheap. Go ahead, let that stuff sell, and let somebody then raise it up where it needs to be. You have a confused kitten that's never seen rain before. Okay, I got one more item. I'm doing good on time. Okay. This was kind of a impulse at the end. I was standing in line and I looked at it and I looked at it. I knew the pattern. This is the thing about a lot of these pressed glass patterns, whether it's carnival glass, opalescent glass. Um, they called the patterns something to do usually with the motif that you see. So in this case, it's very clear. This is dragon and lotus. Now, if you didn't know that that was a lotus, you'd still look for carnival dragon, right? And you'd be able to figure out that this was the dragon and lotus pattern. It's a super, super popular Fenton pattern. Now, this is the marigold color, which is the least desirable of the colors. But let me show you what uh, this pattern does over here it is what did i say dragon and i usually don't put the ands there we go i'm by highest let me just first show you that um what's out there there are some rare colors of this and one of the reasons i wanted to pick this up and show it to you in person is so that you're aware of the pattern um let's go to solds Get some reality check here. But yet, look, you find this in red. Pick this sucker up. The red sells. It's this one on auction. Um, the seller probably could have got at least 100 bucks more than that. But they sold it on auction. Then you've got, this is a peach opalescent. Again, not the greatest of title choices here. Probably why it didn't come up. Had they actually spelled out opalescent, this would have probably brought more, see, one bid. They could have gotten more bidders on this. Again, the red, the red, the red. That one's even as is. Check that out. As is, still brought over 100 bucks. So you can see, this is a very, very desirable, again, don't say opal, it's opalescent. Opalescent! <laughs> Ruffled full, not bad. Now we're getting into the cobalt blue. But yeah, this is a pattern to keep your eyes open for wherever you're going. And you know, if you look at these comps, you know you can pay. 20 25 dollars for this and still turn a really good profit we're still in the 70 dollar range here and now we get down to um, a marigold color now we're at 63 they just called it orange back down to the blues pumpkin marigold I like what they called that one there so we're in the $60 to $70 range on this bowl, $45 with a bid. Um, not a bad title. Not a bad title. $45, $45, $40. So yeah, I know I'm at least at $40 on this item. And then you're going to get down into sellers. Let's go down here. You're going to get down into results where you're going to go, oh, I saw one for $10. I saw one for $25. $25. And then a lot of sellers will go, well, that's all I can ask for mine. What I want you guys to know, you can sell this for $40 to $50. You don't have to sell it that cheap. And I encourage you not to. So, And a lot of the dealers at the antique malls are looking at those 20 25 dollar results and that's how they're pricing it so i did pay 35 i paid 35 but 
I paid that mostly because I wanted the piece as a lesson piece. Yeah. Paying up for items can really, really be valuable because you're not going to find, you're not ever going to find this at a Goodwill for 10 bucks. The Goodwill people are going to be savvy enough to, to search dragon glass bowl. Most of them know it's carnival glass. They're going to find comps that are up there. I suspect they would price it like 2025. So, you know, it's still a good deal at 2025, right? So that's how you start gaining your knowledge. So you can pay up for things and know where your margin is. I would much prefer to sell one item and make a 50 to $100 price margin than to have to sell 10 things to make that same amount of price margin. That makes sense? So sometimes paying up works, but you have to know, you have to know your niche. You have to know your stuff. That's, that's the whole thing. Once you really fine tune it and you know it, you can grab those things on instinct. There you go. Don't make you bid on those cheaper rates. <laughs> I know. I used to do a lot of that. I used to do a lot of that. And I used to sometimes feel guilty. And, and I've gotten over that because we all have access to the same information. There, I mean, I, not to spout my YouTube channel, but this is free information. Is it, anybody can learn this. Not everybody will take the time to learn this. You guys taking the time to learn this, pat yourself on the back because it's going to put you ahead of 90% of sellers out there. I'm just saying, most people don't want to do the work. They just want to list it and have it sell for, for big money or just get rid of it and sell it for what they can sell it for. So. That's why niche is rich, as they say. All right. Okay, guys, I have about five minutes left because I have to get somewhere by two o'clock. So I just want to kind of focus my attention over on the chat and answer any questions that you guys may have over there. And um, yeah, Friday will be our jewelry sale. So if you saw my shopping at dog junkies uh, all those awesome pins that I got there those are coming up in Friday sale as well some other stuff you haven't seen so as I've been moving I've been finding little stashes of jewelry that I tucked away that I forgot I had yes yeah, my little my little turtle turtle my turtle necklace I think he's dichroic glass too. How do you how do you find selling on Cherish versus eBay? Uh, wait, where did that go? Do you get the really high prices? Yeah. So um, Cherish. So first, yes, I get much higher prices on Cherish. I'm very careful about what I list over there. It needs to be things that are worth the time to go through the extra work because there's nothing that cross posts over to cherish right now. Yes, I take my pictures and descriptions I've already got, but um, I still have to do a little bit more work. So I want to make sure it is worthwhile. Um, cherish takes 20% as long as you have at least 20 things listed. It's 30% if you don't have 20 things listed. They curate, they don't accept everything. Um, if if I could spend more time on Cherish, I could make Cherish a full-time income. I don't have a lot listed over on Cherish because of the time element. eBay is kind of where I'm at. It's easy. Um, but I do love the prices I get on Cherish versus eBay because it is a completely different customer base. It is interior decorators. It is people spending other people's money. That's really key. They are not so much looking at price as long as it's within their budget they're looking at does it fit in this style that i'm putting together so cherish is pretty awesome um but but put your better stuff over there 
At some point, can you share how to tell if jewelry is gold, gold filled plated? I get really confused. I do too. I have to go by what it's marked. Honestly, I'm not a jewelry expert. That's why I do the jewelry sales because I can answer questions, explain what I know versus having to put something in the eBay listing that I may not be able to figure out. You really didn't make money. Oh, oh. Slow down, slow down here. I really didn't make money when I had a booth. Not worth the effort for me in my area, but it was a hoot and I enjoyed the experience. You know, that's kind of where mine is too. Um, I enjoy merchandising. I enjoy you know, just playing around in my booth and spending time in there. So the booth, yeah, uh, at the end of the day, I'm really not making any money at the booth. I'm not working the booth either. In all fairness, I'm not working it. I'm not there all the time making it all look good either. So if I was really working it, I'd probably make yeah, four or five hundred dollars a month profit. Uh, but I'm I'm pretty much breaking even kind of like more like a hobby right now because I don't have the time to put into it. It's a time investment. A booth is a time investment for sure. The name of the app for cross posting is list perfectly. And down in my description of every video, there is a link with a code that gets you 30% off to try it for, for the first month. So be sure you use that, get that deep discount if you want to check it out. Yeah. I love list perfectly. Love list perfectly. I could not do all the cross posting without it. I just couldn't do it. It it saves me so much time and pays for itself. 100%. I saw an alabaster trinket box listed on Cherish for $900 but on eBay for around 30 to 40. Yeah, that's not that it'll sell for 900, but um it's definitely going to sell in a higher range than on eBay. It's just a different clientele. eBay, eBay is the online flea market. You know, where you expect to get things a little cheaper. So that's why I say build your own brand, your own store, your own following, and you'll get better prices. That crazy lamp lady, perfect example. She has built her brand. She has built her following. She has 150,000 followers on her eBay store. You can build that and then people want to come shop from you. It's a it's a long process. It's going to take work. It's not going to be an overnight thing. And um, but it's doable. It's doable. Yay, Hazel. And do inventory at the same time. Yes, that's true. How much time do you put in, into eBay to get three to four thousand dollars out of it? Um, you know, it's, it's really interesting. It depends what you consider the time. So you source, I don't really count that time. I count that in my YouTube time because I have to do that for my YouTube videos. I have to bring the stuff home and log it in. Okay. That counts towards eBay. You know, that takes me maybe depending how much I buy up to 30 minutes. Um, listing, I can list what I figured out is I can list research list and ship an item in like 15 minutes so that's four items an hour so really you know that's this is my math this is the danny math so if i'm putting in an eight hour day um listing 30 items a day let's say for plus or minus that results in about a three to four thousand dollar a month business but, but those are all variables depending on what you're selling, what your price points are, all of that. Oh, it's a height thing. Candle jar. Okay. I'm, I'm reading uh, Brenda's comment over here about the, the candy jar. Okay. That's worth doing. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is by measurement too. That is so true. I forgot about that point. Yeah. Think you're wasting time somewhere. Analyze it. Analyze it. If you are doing this as a business, if this is a serious business thing, you need to know. You need to know how long it takes you to list, how long it takes you to do the photos, how long it takes you to do your research. You need to know all those things 
so that you can either raise your ASP, your average selling price and bigger margin, or reduce those time wastes. All right. I have to go. I have an appointment <laughs> and I don't want to drive fast in the rain. So thank you everyone for, for hanging out with me and uh, watch for some more cool videos this week. Come back to the live sale on Friday at 1 p.m. And go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone.